As you all know, the Examiner Laser technology has evolved a lot. Uh, since I use VSEX, I am presenting what the VSEX has evolved over a period of time. But this is true for any other Examiner Laser company and it has gone through an evolution of uh, the way the, the ablation is done on the cornea, the, the uh, iris uh, registration or the tracking system, etc. All this is done to benefit the patient immensely with a smoother ablation, precise treatment, indications have increased, reduced rates of retreatment and the treatment has become more predictable, the risk has reduced and the benefit has increased. In any of this machine that does a customized treatment, the general principle is acquire, design, align and then deliver. Now we have equipments or the technology in use to, for each of these uh, things. Let's have a look at all this. Acquisition is by, by wavefront or abrometer, which is some, uh, based on a Hartman check abrometer and it acquires and creates a shape of the cornea uh, uh, and it calculates the wavefront that is present in the cornea. And this this is then, uh, 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 there is an algorithm which will uh, calculate the and create a shape of the cornea which can be understood by the examiner machine and then it would change and uh, uh, suggest a shape which should be created by the examiner laser. Now for this, uh, the Fourier based algorithms are used as opposed to the, uh, uh, the Zernike shape and if you see here, the Fourier algorithm gives the best possible shape the, uh, closest to what actually it is measuring uh, as compared to the Zernike shape. So the data resolution is much better with the, when you employ the Fourier algorithm as against the Zernike algorithm. Now, having created a shape to be formed on the cornea, then the responsibility is that we need to create it exactly on the cornea. And for this, uh, you need to have not only an eye tracker, but an iris registration as well. Because an iris registration will compensate for the cyclotorsion and will compensate also for the pupil centroid shift. Uh, the, change, the pupil changes when the patient lies down under the machine because of the intensity of the light and because of the change in the pupil shape or the size, the pupil centroid also shifts and therefore the responsibility of the machine or the technology is to center the ablation exactly over the pupil centroid. We all know that the cyclotorsion is a reality and that if the cyclotorsion is not taken into consideration, every degree of cyclotorsion will induce a amount of a higher order abrasion and if the cyclotorsion is too much, that is more than 10 degrees, it will significantly affect the outcome. Even the clinical impact of the pupil centroid shift is also very well known and, and, and since the patient, uh, the, uh, if, if the pupil becomes very small, the pupil centroid also shifts significantly and if that is not adjusted for, then it induces an RMS error on your treatment. So what in fact all these customized laser machines are doing is, they, they capture the device, they, they then analyze it and then you have the spot size which is either variable or a very small spot size. Then you have an iris registration for your cyclotorsion and pupil centroid shift and then you have a tracking system which tracks much better than the, faster than the laser can deliver and all this will ultimately give you a better accuracy and a better now having said that, uh, whether this would materialize into a good visual quality or no is an issue. So we now have uh, machines which do conventional LASIK, machines which do optimized LASIK in which only one aspect of higher order abrasion is, uh, is uh, you know, taken into consideration and we have a wavefront guided LASIK where all the higher order abrasions are taken into consideration and are treated. Now are there genuine difference in the visual performance or the outcome that is what will ultimately affect the patient's uh, quality of vision and that is what we we have a technology to deliver whether it is good enough or no then let's have a look at it 
there is a there was a model which was developed to simulate the visual performance and 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 assess the outcome of all these three procedures that is the conventional optimized and the wavefront guided in this model that was developed a perfect correction of the sphere and a cylinder could be achieved and the higher order aberration would depend on what was the pre op one and what kind of surgery was this model i subjected to whether it was optimized of the wavefront guided and if you see the predicted change in the higher order uh, aberration rms values and compare it with all the three three techniques that is conventional optimized and wavefront you can see the green one which is of wavefront guided is less in all these cases whether it is whether the i had a pre op high low pre op higher order aberration or whether the i was highly aberrated pre operatively in in all this the uh, the the wavefront guided would ultimately give Uh, a less amount of uh, rms value of the higher order aberration so what are the odds of inducing significant higher order aberration with the type of ablation that you are doing now when you compare this optimized versus the wavefront guided you have 2.2 times the chances of, of inducing us a higher order aberration with an optimized versus the wavefront guided and conventional versus the wavefront guided 4.7 times so with the wavefront guided you induce very minimum higher order aberration whereas with a conventional you use a little um, more but whereas with, uh, uh, with an optimized you use little more but with the conventional you have more now whether the patient or whether the eye is highly aberrated pre op or lowly aberrated pre op the wavefront guided aberration uh, ablation has a, a has a role of reducing the final higher order aberration in that eye so the uh, the change in the higher order, order aberration when the patient or the eye is highly aberrated is significant in a wavefront guided because it attacks that and it reduces them whereas if you have a normal pre op that means the wavefront uh, aberrations are not too many the wavefront guided does not induce any further uh, higher order aberration as compared to the optimized now this is in a uh, in a model eye let's see how this materializes clinically there was a study from stanford university school of medicine and in this particular study there was the design was like this there were 110 eyes of 55 subjects and each patient was done one eye uh, uh wavefront guided and one eye uh, wavefront optimized and both these eyes were the flap making was done with the help of a femtosecond laser but the laser used in a customized was the visex star s for custom view and the laser used for the wavefront optimized was the wave light and this is a very very important study uh, this will probably tell you the same patient undergoing wavefront guided in one eye and wavefront optimized in the other eye this is the guy who is going to probably tell you which one is the better of the two at the end of 12 month uncorrected visual acuity if you look at those uh, figures uh, then if you take the 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 vision in the uh, in 69 or 612 region both of them are same but when when the when you take go higher up that is 6665 or 64 definitely there is a significant number of patients who have good vision in a wavefront uh, guided then com- as compared to the wavefront optimized so when you look at the visual acuity up to 69 or so there is absolutely no difference between the two but as you go to the higher value, values then you start seeing the differences between the two more important than that the quality of the vision is more important and for assessing the quality of the vision the vision was examined at a 25% contrast acuity and here again you can see that there were more patients who gained line and then uh, the patients who lost line in a wavefront guided as compared to the wavefront optimized and very important when all these patients were asked which was the eye that was preferred by them was it a wavefront guided eye or whether it was a wavefront optimized eye and surprisingly 64% of the patients pointed to the wavefront guided eye as against 36% who pointed to the wavefront optimized eye now we have we are at a stage where we have a technology to assess the wavefront aberrations in the eye we have a we have algorithms to create the shape on the uh, on, on the cornea 
optimally utilizing the great, the full potential of the excimer laser and 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 the uh, optical modeling has already shown that uh, the wavefront guided is better as well as clinically also it has shown that the wavefront guided is better than a wavefront optimized in terms of quality of vision and therefore what i feel is wavefront does matter for a good quality of vision in an excimer laser surgery thank you very much for your kind attention